Hi guys, um, thanks for the invite, Kaylee. Yes, it's my busy day, it's my hub night, so bear with me if I suddenly dash off to start getting stuff out of the oven and things like that. Um, I come to this from a completely different angle. I um, got involved with the food hubs, first of all, as a producer, and this was pre, this is going back to the food assemblies, and our local food assembly wasn't being set up quick enough for my liking as a producer, and I ended up running it and taking it on for my sins. The other difference I've got is it's just me. There is no committee. It's my business. So there is no CIC. There was no ethics to start off with, if that makes sense. Um, although I do in my own right contribute to charities and do with my own business and stuff like that. But I never thought about doing it through the food hub. And then COVID hit and my orders went through the roof and I had loads and loads of inquiries for not just live, delivering in Litchfield and the local towns around me but going further and further afield so I now start charging delivery but half of those delivery costs go to the YMCA which is my charity of choice how that's dealt with is I hold that money and when they need something desperately they ring me because they know I've got the pot of money I go out and get them the trolley full of sugar, if that's what they need, and go and deliver it. That's worked all the way through really, really good. Um, even doing that, I'm undercutting the supermarkets with their delivery charges. The people were, were happy and they didn't mind. And again, they don't mind paying delivery if they know it's not all coming to you. They know it's going somewhere else. It makes them feel better as well. And then coming up to Christmas, working very closely with uh, Kate from Slow Food Birmingham they'd started to put a pay it forward on with a lot of their projects so I added on a pay it forward for the YMCA and that money goes directly to them so every month they get a chunk of money that they can do with what they want towards the food bank or their residents they have 71 residents in their two um, complexes so that's where we are at the moment with food and helping those less fortunate than us we had started, we were in very, very, very early talks with the YMCA to go in and do cookery lessons, um, especially for the 16 to 18 year old residents that they've got. Going back to the basics, they could just about put a piece of bread in the toaster, but that'd be as far as their cookery skills went. My aim was, and still is, if they can go and cook eggs in three different ways, poached, scrambled, boiled, They've got a variety of meals for the week, but it's different. It's high protein, it's quick, it's easy, and they are cheap. Yes, Dan, I agree, you can sell them for £2, but we know there are people out there that don't and things like that, again, because of what they believe in. We're starting to work with our local transition group in Litchfield to see how we can connect the, uh, the dots together. They come at it very much... Um, their key things to start off with over a year ago were transport and how they could get more people into Litchfield, which is my local city, forgetting that the likes of me living in a village, if I haven't got that car, I haven't got the public transport. So it's trying to educate them back, but also say things are bigger than the transport system. We need to look wider. So we're in very, very early talks with them. So we haven't gone to the lengths at the moment or the range of projects that um, Kent are doing and Dan's doing with the farm and everything like that. But we're making slow, small baby steps. But I think also the difference is it's, it's my business. So I do need to learn, earn an income from this. So there has to be a ceiling at what point, what I can give and what I can't give away. That's Mercia for you.